thank you for being here. Thank you for the people who organized that. It, it's a pleasure to be there. Um, how are you doing? Yay! Uh, fine. I'm fine too. Hope we will be fine after this talk too. Um, I hope you won't hate me because I will try hard to kill one of our dearest dear stories in LARP. We will see if it will survive or not. To, in order to achieve that, of course, I play a little bit dirty. I pushed some ideas, stretched and forced it a bit. Um, but it can sound a bit extreme or exaggerated sometimes. But take it as um, an alibi to enhance discussion or re further reflection. So I don't uh, know if you agree with me because even I don't agree with myself on this topic. I'm, I'm very conflicted. So. Please help, help me out. <laughs> that. Uh, and also, uh, why I'm giving this talk, uh, you know, maybe it can provoke <laughs> reaction. And also, it's Wednesday in Oslo. You come from all over the world to be there. So it's a good idea to, to stay there. Uh, I need a bit of courage from you because I'm a bit stressed to be on such a cool uh, stage. So if you can cheer me up a bit or applaud, this can help me. <laughs> <a bit>. uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for the librarian stuff, but we are good people. Usually. <laughs> so, um, this is the problem. LARP is not a good medium from storytelling. This is my point. Our stories suck. <laughs> they are mediocre at best. Um, yes, I'm here to say that your favorite LARP, my favorite LARP, on a narrative point of view, are rubbish. So why we are loved that so much? Why we travel all the world to live that story? We don't know why. We are strange people, but maybe we can reflect a bit on that. So we believe that we are good storytellers, but we are not. So what we are good at, because we, we are good at something, creating experiences, creating context, universe where you can live in. I have now some word from a very important German LARPer, our friend Karl, who say, a spectre is haunting <laughs> Europe. The spectre of participation, this participatory <laughs> culture that is going on. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, LARP probably is not a medium for storytelling. It is rather a media for experience and participation. Luckily, because we have to admit that we are a terrible audience. We are ejectors, we are explorers, we want to act in first person, we don't need storytelling, storytellers. We want to be free, we want to, to co-create how cocky we are. Um, so, you know about the hero's journey, I will give you a very, very short um, uh, resume of what it is. Is this famous model where that we can find in many uh, tradition, religion, fiction, products, the movie, the books, all this kind of stuff we absorb on a daily basis without even noticing that. Okay? We are, uh, it's cultural, of course, but it's, it's wide. It's, it's a wide uh, storytelling um, um, uh, protocol, let's say. So to be very brief, the um, hero receive a call. That call will change the hero's life. And thanks to the helpers and mentors, the heroes try and achieve to manage to um, overcome obstacle and finally succeed and then go back home. So very, very, very short. Why we cannot use that in LARP? Why LARP is not a good language to achieve that? I think because of these four points, we can add some, of course. Um, because we are not good with the individual hero figure, because um, we need interaction. So we are all heroes in our stories, but at the same time, we are helpers, mentors, villains, in other stories that are taking place at the same time in the same space. And now I will give you a very serious example with my prop. I bought that from Italy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that is to make my point number two, no linear narrative. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, the speech is over. <laughs> so, as you can see, uh, there is a storyline, but this linear element contains millions of bubbles that interlay, interlace, clash, merge, 
those bubbles are the main experience of the player. The bubbles are already in the room. The designer chooses the room according to the design division the they have. The bubbles at, at the beginning of the LARP are the player expectation. They are floating into the air, ready to take off. The designer open, opens the window, and an airflow comes in. In this case, it was me blowing. The airflow is the storyline. He has a direction, comes from alpha to omega, from the beginning to the end. This is the narrative journey, the linear one. But the bubble, our experience, they will follow the airflow, but with different paces, different direction. They will follow more or less the airflow, like I, I tried. But we cannot force them in a precise direction. We can just offer suggestions. It's magic, it's delicate, it's poetic. Point number three, agency. We need agency. We want an agency at any cost. The worst thing a designer can do for you is take away, take off from your agency, from you, your agency, from your character. How, how angry we can have, we can become with this, the design, with this designer. We basically it's our superpower, is our main feature, is what makes LARP LARP. So agency means action. In LARP, we don't want to be passive. Hero. Just follow orders. LARPers don't. <laughs> we all know that. Point number four, safety and negotiation. Heroes are always right. They don't care about the others. They went straight to the point. They want to achieve the goal. Basically, heroes don't negotiate. LARP do. LARPers do. Very quick. Uh, idea about the fact that we use two interfaces, the player and the character. So the player, the character is the interface we use to follow the linear storyline, uh, which is usually collective, is the same story for all the characters. But then we have the player, the, 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 the um, face behind the masks. And this is the experience, this is about you, usually through your body. We mix up these two interfaces, we slip from one to another in, in the same LARP without even noticing. So we do have stories, of course, we do have stories in our LARP. We need it, human beings are basically storytelling, storytelling animals. Sh stories shape our universe, our knowledge, but our stories are a bit different, are more alibis for interaction, for experience new world, to commit to compromise ourselves. So now I, I will do the same thing that Karin just do for you. So please close your eyes. It will be very short. Uh, and now think about your best experience at Alarp, the strongest, the first one that comes to your mind. Please take, please take 20 seconds and now explore that moment. Remember the details. This goes also for the people in streaming. Thank you, you can open your eyes. Probably most of us have thought about feelings and emotion more than a plot. Probably something related to also other participants, other heroes. I'm sure those feelings were strong and beautiful. Now think about the story. Was the story that good per se, or maybe was based on a cluster of solid tropes? <laughs> this is maybe why we had to so hard time to communicate the LARP magic. We LARP since 10, 20, 30 years, and we are still not able to explain what LARP it is. When we have to explain that to a non-LARPer, um, usually we start um, explain the plot. Then we get frustrated and say, it's hard to explain. It's better to try, <laughs> no? You have to experience that. Mm? <laughs> this is... This is the, the power of the magic. The magic of LARP is the first person audience is experience that feelings. The, you can have an audience when you tell a story. You cannot have an audience when you talk about an experience. It's very hard. So a lot of us already do um, design for interaction, of course. But my point is, is, is we should consider ourselves more experienced designers than storytellers. Uh, it can sound like a little step, but for me it has been quite a major mind shift. Uh, I wanted to share that with you. Um, just to finish, 
Umberto Eco in the 60s wrote The Open Work, that was um, a, a study about the avant-garde artists that proposed, started at the time to propose a new wave of interaction to the audience. He defined participatory culture as participation as an act of conscious freedom at the center of a relational network. I think we can steal that from him and say the LARP is an act of conscious freedom at the center of a relational network. Thank you, Umberto, for that. We, we already know that thing, but maybe just inside our bubble. Now that everyone, brands, companies, people in general, are more and more into interactive, immersive, experience field, now we can make the difference. How? I clearly don't know. If somebody knows, please tell us. But I don't know what we can do, but I know something we can offer. And this is this motto to me. No customer allowed. <laughs> we have this problem, which is also our strongest point. Okay? We want, probably LARP will never become mainstream, because you cannot exactly buy a LARP. You can buy the permission to be a content creator for this experience altogether. So we, are, we, have, body, we have this very powerful tool in our hands, so we should use it. This is our utopian playground. No leaders, no heroes. As someone said, this revolution is faceless. We are all in this together. So let's enjoy our collective journey. Thank you.